Uh, welcome everyone, my name is Greg Ganczewski and I represent uh, Sabra, the Polish Packaging, of, uh, Packaging Research Institute and uh, we were the main uh, a partner responsible for Rock Package 4 and uh, about that I will tell you uh, in, in, in great details, although Andre already uh, told uh, much about what Plastis was all about and also shown uh, what we did and uh, in Walk Package 4, what we mainly did is uh, something which was called by the project vocabulary the Transnational Advisory Scheme. What does that mean in, other, in, in, in our world? It means something very tangible, something very concrete, uh, some kind of information search that we can all use that will uh, give us all the info we need about uh, sustain, uh, sustainability and sustainable plastics and bioplastics and basically uh, everything we wanted to promote in our project. So uh, just some introductory info about, about our institute. Uh, our institute is mainly, uh, it concerns itself with packaging and we have like different laboratories for packaging, material testing and also transport packaging testing. Uh, we also have a certification center and we offer information services uh, and uh, even though we deal uh, mostly with uh, packaging, uh, most of the, one of the most popular uh, packaging materials is, uh, uh, is of course plastic. And therefore we deal uh, uh, with plastic a lot and uh, also uh, we are always very interested in uh, new and innovative uh, plastic packaging uh, solutions. So uh, we feel we are a very good uh, contributor to to the project. Uh, we are also members of different um, uh, chambers of commerces and institutions and uh, associations such as for instance European Bioplastics which is also very close to uh, what we are doing here in the Plastics project. So uh, the main expected results of uh, Plastics were already mentioned by Andre but I will just I will just repeat them once more so those were the creation of this national, national information point uh, also creation of information toolkit, which I will be mostly talking about. Creation of the certification system for compostable plastics in Slovenia and Slovakia, which we uh, also completed with uh, great success. And also the creation of roadmap, and that was, the, um, that was actually the subject of uh, uh, the first presentation, of the presentation that Luke Palmen did. What I would like to uh, talk about today is mainly those three points, but mainly I will be focusing on the second one. Um, so, typical Gantt chart of, of, of this work package for uh, activities that we did and I would just like to very quickly go through all of them so uh, you will actually see the road that we, that we made from the very beginning of the project where we didn't really know uh, which way we would like to proceed and what we would like to do to the final output of the project which can be summarized in this book and uh, also uh, as a note of course I will repeat it later on this book, uh, we also have some copies available in the, in the front desk, in the front registration desk of, the, uh, of our conference. So if you would like to have, to have it, you can, you can just go and take it. Uh, of course, this book is also available on, uh, on our website. And it's also available in all four uh, uh, project languages. So uh, if you're a Slovenian, we have a Slovenian version as well, and it's available on the website. Um, so work package four. Mm. The road to this transnational advisory scheme. Uh, what we started from, we, first of all, we started from something which we call the transna transnational context report. So we basically wanted to take to look at the context of uh, of uh, existing knowledge, of existing know-how, and of what uh, our actual target markets, which are which were mostly uh, small and medium enterprises, um, but also larger enterprises but also uh, local and national governments and all, uh, of course, all general public as well, what they thought about uh, uh, plastics, what they thought about sustainability, uh, about bioplastics, etc. So this is the first uh, step, step we did. We just wanted to see uh, how our public, uh, how our target market uh, reacts to uh, different questions about uh, bioplastics. So we did this 
very simple document. It's, it's, it's of course also available. It has two parts, like first is like a theory and literature review about sustainability, different definitions, what are plastics, what are bioplastics, etc. But the most important part of this uh, report was the market research. And we did this market research in Poland and Slovenia mostly. Uh, for Polish packaging industry, Polish end consumers, also Slovenian packaging retail industry, uh, and there were also some data about Polish food and retail sector. So you can see that the scope of, of uh, our um, target markets was quite, quite broad. And uh, some of the conclusions we got were actually surprising. Some of them we sort of um, predicted that they were this way, but the most important ones were that uh, both Polish and Slovenian companies are not really familiar with the term sustainable, the term that we used a lot in our application format that we used a lot, and that's also being used a lot, uh, a lot in those kind of projects. But companies mainly, they, they understood some, some of this word, but some of them they didn't understand it well. Some of them thought it's a management term, some of them thought correctly that it's more of a political and uh, general term but it wasn't understood that well. Um, both, both countries' industry are uh, familiar with other terms that are more concerned with, uh, with the products. In our instance, that was like uh, terms like biodegradable or carbon footprint. Uh, another uh, huge uh, conclusion that we have is that market is definitely uh, Mar markets in Poland and Slovenia, when it comes to, to plastics, uh, is, is taking the so-called pool strategy. So it's like a market-oriented approach to innovation. So basically you can summarize it in the words, if the customer uh, consumer is willing to pay for something, we will adapt and we will give it to them. Um, a little bit sad uh, conclusion that we also found out is that companies that use plastic are not really that much uh, concerned with what happens to uh, at the end of the life cycle of their product. So when their product becomes a waste, uh, for them it's of very little consequence. However, what was very, what was very positive and motivating for us to uh, proceed further with the project was that companies were very willing and interested to receive assistance and this is exactly why our project uh, was uh, primarily made. So, started from those conclusions, we, uh, we wanted to uh, build this kind of um, a publication, uh, this kind of uh, so, sort of a toolkit that would be available on many different uh, medias uh, that would uh, give all the answers that the industry and all concerned parties like uh, Policymakers, local and national governments, and also general public would like to know about uh, plastics, about sustainable plastics, about what we call here bioplastics. So basically, this information toolkit that we would like to create, uh, we thought of, of it in a way of this kind of guide for entrepreneurs because they were the main, uh, our main target. So that's why we targeted for for them, and we wanted it to be a compre uh, comprehensible guide about everything that. They, that you need to know about, uh, about bioplastics and sustainability. And of course, like this was the draft version, so it was still in the, uh, in the draft phase. However, this, this is mostly what the content of this draft was. And uh, I will not go into details of that because I will be telling you what, what you can find exactly in the final version, but uh, you can see that uh, in this presentation how the idea was developing. Uh, so, what we did, what we did afterwards, after after creating this this this, this sort of um, draft, uh, we went to the industry again, and we actually wanted to ask uh, the industry, our, our target market, uh, whether what we what we prepared and what we presented uh, would be useful to them, whether they would be uh, happy to receive this kind of uh, this kind of assistance in in this kind of a form. So we made this like little questionnaire that was a uh, that that was a base. There was a basis for an uh, interview with the companies. And in here, um, we asked all those questions that, would, that helped us to shape the guide further so that uh, we would know that uh, companies would receive exactly the help that they need. So the questions were mostly about the structure and the form of the advisory scheme. Uh, and 
we got approximately 120 answers, both in form of questionnaires and different uh, interviews that, that were prepared in all uh, project uh, countries. So also some um, interesting implications uh, stemming from, from, from this market research was that uh, most companies that we approached did not yet use bioplastics, and this is also reflected in what uh, Andre was uh, saying. But, and however, half of the companies plan to use them in the near future, in one form or another, or even if they maybe didn't know what uh, bioplastics were they, were, they still heard about something like that and they were interested uh, about those applications, and they didn't say definitely no. Um, majority of the companies already had some very <laughs> basic knowledge of bioplastics, or maybe even just they, they, they just heard the terminology. Uh, and most important knowledge that companies uh, would like to obtain from the guide was, of course, commercial availability, general characteristics, applications, economic implications of using uh, bioplastics and uh, waste management implications mm -hmm. as well. Um, however, companies did not feel the same towards certification and processing, which, according to us, are extremely, uh, extremely crucial issues when it comes to uh, the actual adaptation of bioplastics uh, into uh, industrial production. So, when it comes to uh, the idea about what the guide should look like, companies would rather have a like, more popular science approach in their guide than a technical one, and majority of uh, the companies would like to have the book available in the form of PDF document. So, this is of course what we, what we did, and some of them also wanted to have a physical format which we, which we printed, and which for instance in Poland is proving to be extremely successful because we printed a lot of uh, uh, pieces for, uh, for our previous conference uh, last year, and uh, we, are we already ran out of uh, the first printing, and we had more than 2,000 uh, uh, guides printed. So right now we're doing a rep uh, reprint. So, um, also, a great number of companies would like to participate in some form of a seminar, workshop, or a conference where sustainable plastics would be discussed. And this is also what we in the Plastics Project are uh, giving them. So all of those findings led to believe us that companies are currently uh, more interested in how sustainable plastics fit to their potential strategic objective uh, than uh, how it fits more to their technical or uh, operational ones. This is a uh, this is connected especially to Poland and, and to Slovakia and to Slovenia, as we said before. Italy is a little bit different, Italy is a little bit higher, higher up when it comes to that. However, we thought that in our guide uh, we should uh, address uh, those issues and give answers to questions uh, that are on, on those strategic levels, but also give some insight about how to go uh, from the strategic level, uh, level to more operational one. That was also very important for us. So in the end, we, uh, uh, we took notice of all of those comments from, uh, from those questionnaires, and we prepared the final version of it. We named it, after a voting, Bioplastics Opportunity for the Future. Uh, and uh, in addition to what we prepared, it also includes the two appendices, which is application examples and the R&D scheme, which uh, Luke uh, told you about in the first presentation. So this is the final, um, uh, the final content, and now I'll go through uh, chapter by chapter just to show you uh, what you can expect to find in here. So first of all, uh, we have this introduction where uh, Luke uh, actually prepared those questions from the questionnaires that we did, uh, and from the interviews that he did. Uh, about what, what are the most popular questions asked by the industry, uh, by people interested in the bioplastics. And basically what we did, we, uh, we, we based our uh, guide on the answers to those questions. So those questions were, what products can be produced for bioplastics? Is it feasible to produce bioplastics from the economic point of view? Uh, also, is it feasible to produce it from the technological point of view? Uh, some questions about companies' competences, about which equipment should be used, uh, why those uh, materials should be certified, how to convince clients to buy them, where does my company find the right resources, uh, materials, polymers, pigments, etc., where to look for partners, 
and of course how do we start. So we try to, to give a very like precise and concise but also easy to understand answer to all of those questions uh, in this guide and that was uh, our main goal of work package 4. So we have a chapter about plastics so in here we should just show like comprehensive background and technical information about plastics. Uh, we show you how we can classify plastics and some market information about global plastic industry just to give a background um, on what we are dealing here with. And uh, also we show what uh, what bioplastics are, how do we understand bioplastics. And we understand bioplastics, uh, we also thought about it for, for, a, for a very long time because this is not very scientific, however this is very um, uh, this idea of uh, bioplastic classification is very much alive and it's very much in common knowledge because it's been promoted for a very long time by uh, the main association, uh, main global association of bioplastics which is called the European Bioplastics and basically uh, it states that uh, bioplastics are such plastics which are either bio-based or biodegradable or both and you can it sounds a little bit confusing but when you look at this graph you see two axes here one shows the biodegradability so on this side of axis everything is biodegradable on this it's not and this side of axis shows the source of the material so in here we can see bio-based so uh, materials made from renewable resources in here we see fossil based so those made from oil and basically you can categorize different types of materials in different types of uh, in, in, in different places in this graph and based on that you will see whether your material is bioplastic or not and this this was developed uh, i think uh, 15 or even maybe 20 years ago uh, by people who, who then founded uh, the uh, association called european bioplastics um, so then we have um, um, then the next subject is the subject of sus uh, sustainability which is also a very uh, important issue from the point of view of both our project and both uh, uh, of what's happening right now at political level the problem is that sustainability is a very complex topic uh, the definition itself is very long and quite difficult to uh, to understand and to explain very quickly so we decided that we also need to address this issue and we have this uh, chapter in here. Uh, we tried to make it as short as possible and as e easy as possible. And this chapter tries to answer about, uh, to, to, uh, to the question of what sustainability is, how plastics can be sustainable and how to assess sustainability on three levels of sustainability, meaning the environmental, social and uh, economic level. So then we have the fifth chapter, which is the most technical one, and it's, uh, uh, th this chapter is about certification, how we can evaluate uh, our plastics and what kind of um, uh, certificates and what kind of uh, symbols we can put on our plastics so that uh, our consumers will know what they are dealing with. Uh, and this is a very technical manual how to certify bioplastics in terms of compostability, bio-based content, and uh, carbon footprint as well. Uh, and this is something which uh, the um, um, certification portals is also dealing with both in, in Slovenia, Slovakia and in Poland where we uh, did, that, uh, did this previously. Um, and then we have this appendices. So the first one is the showcase, which is the list of possible bioplastics applications. And it's, it's actually pretty fascinating read because you can see that you can make everything from bioplastics. Whatever you think that is already made from plastics, you can probably make it from bioplastics. And you have some examples uh, with uh, very specific uh, company info of, uh, source of the uh, material there in the appendix. And also the R&D scheme. Uh, which is the like list of the data are in the contacts and this is something which uh, was talked about in length by Luke in the beginning. So uh, once more I invite you to take to take a copy. I think that I think that there should be enough for all of us left. If not you can of course find the copy on the um, on our website and of course uh, Add, your website, add, add our website to your bookmarks because it's being updated very... Uh, we try to update it often and even if the project is finishing we are still planning to uh, update it and uh, give you 
uh, very precise information about bioplastics such as this one. So thank you very much.